Hey everybody, this is Jared with Duckless Plus once again. I just kind of want to go over this branch box multi-zone system that we just got done installing. Uh, we put in the branch box. We got all the primary piping ran for each indoor evaporator. Control wires are ran. The unit has been addressed. And we also did the drain lines on all the units. And I'll kind of just show you a quick quick little description of all that stuff so anywhere here is the branch box unit itself um, the branch box when it comes from Mitsubishi it comes with these little uh, insulation covers for the ports I like to put them on and then I label them you know it, it, for some reason it starts at a at the bottom and goes up to E if you're not going to use this port you can um, install an isolation valve on here if you wanted to add a future loop down the road. However, we know this is not going to end up getting an extra additional port. They're only going to use these four. And on top of that, you've got to keep in mind that you size these condensers to the potential mount that you're going to have. So if you're going to potentially add another loop, you need to make sure that the outdoor unit has the capacity for this additional head. We didn't size this one for that, which can save the customer some money so they don't have to purchase a bigger unit. We also like to put, you know, that we installed this unit. Um, the uh, technicians, Denver Wilcox, Jared Beach, the date. And then I'm going to show you over here real quick. Uh, some of the wiring that's involved on this. So basically you wire all of the the heads in, the communication cables. Um, you're going to address everything up here, which units get used, which units are not getting used. That's super critical, okay? If you don't do that, you're going to have problems with this unit. Um, you know, everything on here is done well. We like to use, I'll kind of go down here. We like to use these little round uh crush connectors for the electrical grounds and we put them on all our grounds like that but uh, also if you look here we we label all of the control feeds you know which one goes to which not only do we label these we do that you know with the you know the ports as well okay so all the ports we know which one's going to be going where where okay and then also you measure your line set distances Okay, and then you're going to do a total line set add at the end. If you don't do this, you're going to run into a problem. Once you get your total line set distance accumulated, we haven't finished uh, that portion of it because we haven't put the total for the outdoor line set, which is the main line here. But um, once we have that, we're going to perform a DSB. A DSB is basically all of the line set distances accumulated and then it's going to basically tell you how much refrigerant you need to put in okay um you know if you've been working on mitsubishi units or even mini splits you should know by now that the machines come with a certain specific amount of line set however they don't tell you how much you need to add unless you do a dsb from mitsubishi so we're going to do that it's going to tell me exactly, I mean, exactly how much refrigerant we need to put in up here, okay? So once we do our pressure test and we get all that done, we're going to know exactly how much refrigerant we're going to put in. And then we're going to inject that in while the unit's under evacuation. And then we open the refrigerant circuit loop and let it equalize. That's how we do our refrigerant drop on these machines. Um... You know, keep in mind that these machines also don't have a liquid line. These small lines right here is not a liquid line. This is what they call a saturated vapor line. This is a true suction line. It is a suction line, but there's no liquid. You know, mini splits don't push liquid. They push saturated vapor, okay? So that's what also makes it a little bit easier on the compressor. It's not trying to push liquid all over the place, which is harder to do. It's much easier to push a vapor gas and suck a vapor gas, okay? And also it's kind of important that you, you know, uh, don't make trapping, you know, make sure that you have 
a slope going back off of your primary main piping here to where that you can get you know oil return that's that's very critical so um but you know that's basically you know uh, a branch box system installed uh, you can do them all kinds of different ways i've seen guys just totally mess this up and make it look terrible you know you don't need to make it terrible you know label everything date everything put your technician's information down here leave your phone number leave your line set distances okay make these match what you're doing up here it's simple you guys you, you can do all this stuff and make it look good i mean this is a professional install you know i had a i had a great question the other day um on one of my uh, videos a, a guy asked me why don't i install isolation valves on here well there's several reasons one they're very expensive two you don't need them you really don't need them i i've done air conditioning for 30 years how many times i've seen a coil go bad uh i would say probably maybe less than five okay they, they don't typically go bad unless they rust out or something got punctured or something okay but um the only time i would recommend you installing an isolation valve on these is like i said before in the video is if you're knowing that you're going to add a future circuit because it has an evacuation port on it and you can run your piping to your in indoor head and then do your thing but keep in mind if you do that you're going to alter the refrigerant loops you're going to take away so however far that line set is, if you do add a future loop, you better put in a little bit of refrigerant. And also you should do a very detailed pressure test. We're gonna fill this machine up to 600 plus PSI on the nitrogen side. We're gonna leave it under pressure for 24 hours, come back the next day and check it. If that thing hasn't moved or budged, we know that we're sitting pretty, okay? So, uh, anywho, uh, remember that nitrogen's an inert gas. It's not going to expand from temperatures. It's, it's going to stay that pressure. So it's, it's a, a good gas to use when you're doing your pressure test. Most refrigeration, you know, guys or, or AC guys know to only use nitrogen, you know, use good refrigeration practices as well when you're when you're installing these you know do your do your pressure tests make sure that it holds i like to purge the units out with nitrogen i like to blow them out because when we do fill these up the first time there's going to be a blend of oxygen in there from them being open to atmosphere right so it's a good idea to basically purge them all out i mean it, a, a tank of nitrogen's fairly inexpensive you guys you know I, I understand it's it does cost a little bit of money but you're gonna you're gonna want to do those things when you install you know a refrigeration loop okay it's it's important um you know and then do your dsb verify the amount of refrigerant you need to add inject it in there after you're done with your evacuation and your system's going to work perfect i mean it i have never had a problem with one of these machines not one you know i don't return equipment you know i mean guys that do that i call them parts changers you don't want to be a parts changer you know be thorough on your systems you know one important thing too i feel like is like your drain so like these these cassettes this one's got a little sawdust on it because we were cutting some wood up here but these cassettes come with a pump built into them so if you see how i have that drain line lifting up and they'll go up 19 inches from the bottom of the unit okay i didn't let this one go up to its full potential and if you see how i have it going down at that point and it's going to come over we teed it in and we're going to we ran all the drains from these machines all of them are tied in you can even maybe see that one back there so we ran four of the drains, we tied them in. Not every single one of these is gonna come on at the same time. You know, let's think about it, you know? So you don't need to run a super huge giant pipe through here. And you also gotta keep in mind that they're under pressure, they're getting pumped out, okay? So, you know, just, just be, be thorough on your work. You know, do a good job. You know, don't make your line sets look tacky. You know, strap your stuff up, zip tie your stuff, make it look good. 
you know, uh, run your, run your pipe straight, you know, look at our piping, how we run it nice and straight, you know, make, make everything look good, get nice, good bends. We actually have a Hillmar ratcheting bender that we bend our pipes with because it, we know at that point it's going to be a perfect bend and we're not going to potentially kink it, right? So, you know, do your, do your best, spend the money, buy the tools you need. Don't be cheap. You know, cheap only costs you more money at the end of the day. Buy the best tools, buy the best equipment, buy the best product, give your best performance. And what, what are you going to be? You're going to be the best, right? That's Duckless Plus's habits. You know, we, we really try to go above and beyond, not just for our customers, but for ourselves, because at the end of the day, if you don't do good work, you're going to be back doing a service call. Okay. Don't do that. Just do it right the first time. You know, be the best at what you can be. You know, if you want to be a heating and air technician or you want to be the best mini split guy, you know, put forth your best effort, you know, go above and beyond for your customers and for yourself. Okay. Again, I'll just kind of show you this one more time. That's basically it. I'm going to grab the door. You know, inside the door kind of gives you some description of things as well, like location of what goes where. You know, it gives you some diagnostic system, lighting codes and whatnot. But, you know, there's really not too much that you need to know about this unit when it comes to that stuff. So, well, anyway, I'm going to get putting this grill on. I got to put my phone down. You guys have a great day. This is Jared with Duckless Plus. If you like these videos, you know, and you're interested in the Duckless, you know, equipment, you know, you want to, you know, subscribe to our channel, give us some likes, you know, put in a comment if you have questions. We would be glad to get back to you as soon as we have an opportunity. But um, thanks again for watching our video and uh, look forward to seeing our channel grow. Thank you guys. Have a good afternoon.